Ladies and gentlemen, the fantasy playoffs are about to get really, really real. We break down the rest of the matchups. We give you our ballers on a budget pick. Go through some of that news as well. It's crucial. Those start-sit decisions are crucial. Get all the information you can, so don't miss a moment of today's show. Zorro.com is where you'll find everything you need for businesses of any size in almost any industry. They have tools, equipment, and supplies for everything you need. Whether you need stuff for industries like electrical, plumbing, manufacturing, or more, Zorro's got it from the brands you know and trust. And Zorro.com offers amazing customer service from, get this, real people. Based in the United States, visit Zorro.com slash footballers to sign up for Zmail and get 15% off your first order. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's garbage time. Hey, oh, <laughs> you're sitting on that one. <laughs> oh, welcome to the show. We've got a good one for you. We had some football last night. Oh, boy, did we. And some fallout today. The Bears took care of Bearsness. Oh. Yeah, mm. that's pretty rough. I liked it. Okay. Well, barely. All right. Not true, though, right? <laughs> the final score was not indicative of the punch in the mouth the Cowboys took last night. From yeah. Mitch Trubisky, yeah. my favorite quarterback. Yeah, yeah. You want some fun Mitch Trubisky trivia? Over the last four games, Mitch Trubisky is 3-1 and one and has a better QBR than everybody but Lamar Jackson in football. So it, it's funny because you, you you could have gone to bat for Trubisky saying they've won three of four, but three of those four were Detroit, Detroit, New York. Mm -hmm. But then you're like, well, what else is he supposed to do against bad teams? Then beat them. Yep, I get it. Which is something the Cowboys had been able to do previously. But here we are. Thursday night football in the books. Jason had a very public uh, – reaction to the end of the game where mm -hmm. you know Dak had a very bad game the Bears defense showed up Cooper and, was my main problem because Cooper had a terrible game you're you're in the fourth quarter I think he was two for 22 completely shut out the game out of reach I mean I I bodied him in my rankings I was so happy and then all of a sudden the Bears are like okay you guys you can were so right wrong I was so right wrong because yeah. now it's like the Bears are just letting them kill the clock by throwing easy, you know, completions with this prevent defense. Why do defenses go prevent? But anyways, I, I well, the, the reason they do it is because it worked fine last night and they won the game. Yeah, that's why they do it. And it wastes the clock and, it, and they don't want to give up one big play. And then all of a sudden it's, you know, a close game with seven minutes left. Yeah. So I, uh, I did. I, I tweeted out that uh, gar garbage time. Garbage time pisses me off because it does. I don't like it. Oh, the garbage man can. <laughs> and uh, Dak, one of the reasons why, and you know, when I was talking about Mitchell Trubisky last night on Twitter, people were furious with Dak. Everybody had Dak in their lineup, and he did not give you a you know week winning week, but through garbage time, he gave you a good enough game: three hundred plus yards and a touchdown. On a night when he was being destroyed, he had five fantasy points in the fourth quarter with seven minutes left, and he turns into a 17-point night. And he's done this before. He did it against the Packers with 13 points in the fourth quarter. He did it against the Jets when they got abs absolutely blown out. And he did it again last night, you know, giving you a shot in week 14 instead of destroying you. And takeaways from this game, Dallas is a uh, first-place team and right now in position to host the playoff game. Oh my goodness! Wow, they're—I so. mean, they're—they're not—they're not very good. No, I mean that division's just worse than they are. Come on, <laughs> Washington, get get in the playoffs. It is Friday. Put Clan Friday. All right, congratulations to Yoko the Joko. That is our patron that won a. Oh, get up. Oh, damn. 
<laughs> Every Friday, we give away a $55 gift card to shopballers.com to one of our jointhefoot.com supporters, Yoko the Joko, the winner today. Congratulations, Yoko. And uh, if I might, before we get into the rest of the episode, we have a ton of matchups to get into. Ballers on a budget on the show today. Your playoffs are on the line, and we're going to do our best to get you through this week. Before we get there, I want to I want to dode on my two co-hosts for a minute. All mm. right. Mm. Uh, number one, I just with a couple. I weeks, don't know what it means, so I take it as an insult. Oh, <laughs> you you would. Uh, it, it's a compliment, though. It means I'm going to say something. I retract my comment. <laughs> it means I'm going to say something nice about you. I'm going to start with Jason, though, because fresh off of his, you know, kind of garbage time tilt and talking about the rankings. I just wanted to give him a shout out because with two weeks left in the regular season, he's currently the number six overall ranker yes. by accuracy for for this year. He's crushing. Uh, so he's doing very well, and you need to remember that in the wake of Amari Cooper catching a <laughs> that ball to Amari Cooper, that last ball to him. It was that was so good, beautiful. I mean, yeah. Cooper just yeah. it was like something you could have done two quarters ago. I, he wasn't <laughs> looking when the ball was thrown, and then it dropped out of the sky. So. Anyways, that was congrats a, on a, a strong year. A Sandlot moment where you just hold your glove up. Yeah, I'll we're, take care of the rest. We're shooting for multiple top tens again, back-to-back mm -hmm. -back years. We like to entertain you, but, you know, winning helps too. So we want to help you win. So congrats to Jay on a strong year so far. You better finish strong. I will. I will. And then I wanted to give a shout-out to Mike because uh, our show – was nominated for some FSGA uh, awards, yes, which is the Fantasy Sports and Gaming Association, uh, including one that uh, a couple that you guys will have very direct control over. Mm, Foot Clan. <laughs> and what we're going to do is we're going to do a giveaway, as we always do, uh, at FootClanGiveaway.com. You'll get a chance to win a signed Nick Chubb jersey. And the way that you can help us, the way that you get an entry, you can go vote for us. And there's a couple categories. Uh, one of them, Mike was nominated as the uh, analyst of the year. So you can go vote for Mike. The and, voice of AWS. <laughs> and then uh, you can vote for this show for best social media, which we were also nominated for. Those are both fan votes. Let's make it happen, Foot, Foot Clan. Clan Assemble! So uh, that's FootClanGiveaway.com. We'll get that up there. We're going to give you a chance to win a really cool jersey, and you can help the show out. And... Uh, you know, we say Mike's head can't get any bigger, but <laughs> yeah. scientifically speaking, that's true. But figuratively, it's every day. figuratively, maybe not. <laughs> you guys got anything else to add before we talk news? Booklandgiveaway.com. Yeah. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. I wish they had like a producer of the year. Because then the judge and Al Borland, you guys could, you're so competitive as it as it is, you could yeah. battle it out. <laughs> Brooks would just win it and hand it to Al Borland, and Al like, Borland would accept. It. Oh, exactly. Because there's <laughs> one of you that is very competitive, and the other one would be like, "Hmm, oh, this is this is nice. Thank you." How very kind. would you be? Would you? Would that be a badge of honor that you would uh, hold on to, Brooks? Yes, I okay. would. In that All case, right. I would. See, that means he takes his work seriously, gentlemen. He sure does. Just not mm. his foosball, okay? Uh, News and notes. Priorities. Yeah, Zimmer says he's going to play. Who am I talking about? Dalvin Cook. <laughs> <laughs> Zimmer's going to play this week, guys. Was, uh, he's put himself in. That was very Yoda. Yeah, this, these were written a little different. I guess this is technically in and out for us. But Zimmer's going says that Dalvin Cook's going to play, going to be close to 100%. Do you believe it? Yes. And... Uh, is there any – would you still play Cook and Madison together? There is no way I'm not playing Cook if he's out there in, in the world. Madison, I'm I'm cooling on him a little bit. I still think that, there, that he is an option in an emergency because there are so many ways Dalvin Cook could either just be benched because they're up or get re-injured or it could be a split, but – I you know I think I'm not going to start him over a guy like uh, uh, Rashad Penny or a Jamal Williams at this point. Uh, Madison would be behind those those caliber of fantasy options. Yeah, when you're talking about Marlon Mack, is he going to play this week? He is uh, fully participating after after being limited on Wednesday. I think he's going to play, and I know that Jason's scared to play him. The matchup is bad, but. I'm I'm willing to play Marlon Mack. Yeah, he should play. He, I mean, it, as soon as you are cleared for full contact, then yeah, full contact means playing in a game. And I don't. It, it wasn't his legs, right? It, he broke his hand, and so I I just worry the combination of 
first week back with the Tampa Bay matchup. I'm certainly not saying you can't start Marlon Mack. Marlon Mack Mack or Alexander Madison in your flex? Marlon Marlon Mack. Mack. Okay, Uh, I agree with you. Lev Bell, in or out, missed practice with an illness. Gay says he's unsure if he's going to be able to play Sunday against the Dolphins. This is a great matchup. If anything, you've suffered through Lev Bell being mediocre, and this was supposed to be your shot. No. Le'Veon Bell says great matchups do not matter to me. I put up terrible numbers regardless of who I play. Yeah, or just more more so like number 10 on the week numbers, even in good matchups. Yeah, he's not. Because he, he went 10-10-11 in three consecutive weeks. He was 11 last matchups. week? No, not last week. Yeah, and what, who did he play last week? Uh, I... I a great matchup. That's all Darnold's had, but Cincinnati, it was Cincinnati. But yeah, so a very good matchup. And Le'Veon Bell, yeah, it, he is low end RB one if he plays. I'm, don't I'm, mistake just my being, words. Just for, being jocular. Don't, don't mistake my words for giving Lev Bell credit. But if okay? you, I don't want you to take hear what I'm not saying. If you have Lev Bell, you're going out and picking up Bilal Powell just to in case. to be prepared for Lev Bell to not be active. That would we agree that it would be Bilal Powell 100 percent, and he played a lot last week, and if. He, they're playing the Dolphins. Yeah. If Bilal Pell has the job, yep. he's going to it's gonna be great. jettison himself up the board where you're looking at him over, in my opinion, over guys like Darius Geis on the road yep. splitting time in Green Bay or um, any of these like handcuffy options. I completely agree. He would actually be a good option. The, the I think he gets to the tier where you go, okay, Benny Snell or Bilal Powell. Both right. good matchups, both thrust into starting position. One I think of them Powell is passes, though. more talented, so I think I would lean Powell there. All right. You can uh, hear more updates, injury updates, jointhefoot.com. We put the game day alerts out every single week, and Mike will be live on all social media channels. Mike in his growing giant forehead noggin. It's all right. One hour before Sunday. Kick- <laughs> I know there's Were a problem. Are you giving me permission to say <laughs> yes. it's all right? Say what you mean. <laughs> we all have eyes. Uh, <laughs> you, can't, you can't hide this thing. No, no. You can find Mike in a crowd real easy. Look, what right. forehead? <laughs> the beanie takes care of it. Uh, news and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. You guys ready to get back into these games? Let's do it. Fantasy forecast. As a reminder, if you didn't listen to the show yesterday, we're not going to talk about these matchups again. That's the Redskins, Packers, Lions, Vikings, Panthers, Falcons, 49ers, Saints, Bengals, Browns, Colts, and Buccaneers all on yesterday's show. we got nine matchups to get through, boys. No bye weeks who, who, who? to save time. We've got all these games, and they all matter. Let's start with the 4-8 and eight Broncos taking on the 8-4 and four Texans. Oh, palindrome. I like that. <laughs> Thank you. That's pretty good, actually, yeah. Texans are nine and a half point favorites. It's a 41 and a half point over under. It's pretty much the third game this week where you kind of have, you know, one team with about a 14, 15 point implied point total. The Broncos not expected to score a lot in Houston. Texans at 25 and a half points. Drew Locke. Can we lean on Drew Locke to supply Cortland Sutton with what he needs? Oh, Sutton? Yeah. I think that Sutton gets... Isn't that really the only question you have then? I thought you were going to say, can we play him? Because it, it is technically a plus matchup against the Houston defense. No. 26 against fantasy quarterbacks. And I was going to say, no. No, thank you. Even though that Drew Locke, he looked okay. He looked better than Brandon Allen for the Denver Broncos offense, in my opinion. Uh, but he only had 134 yards on 28 attempts. He had two touchdowns because Cortland Sutton is a monster of a man. But no, I'm not playing him. But, yes, Cortland Sutton in this matchup should get enough done. I, I worry that Cortland Sutton is going to hurt people in the playoffs just because I In this matchup or you're saying in it's, general? It's just he's not going to be great every single week solely because he's got a second-round rookie quarterback. You know, it's, you just talked about the yardage, right? There wasn't enough. He just happened to get two touchdowns, and I don't think Drew Locke is going to be able to sustain – Cortland Sutton, week in, week out, is a great player. But how do you bench him? You, you don't. You can't. You don't. That's I, why I think I'm you saying, have to play him. I, and I agree. I mean, but, I would play him if he's in my roster. But just statistically speaking, he's going to hurt you one of these weeks. In it, it, it is possible. But against the Chargers, an extremely difficult matchup for quarterbacks and for wide receivers, Cortland Sutton was four for 74 with two touchdowns. If, if Drew Locke is throwing 180 yards, but – 
Cortland Sutton is getting 75 of them, I don't care. I'm still playing Sutton. There is a, a slight immunity <laughs> to opposing defenses when you're 6'4", 216. There, there's something that happens, you know, where you're going to just demand the target and, you know, have the opportunity like Brandon Marshall used to do to still put up numbers in these matchups that maybe don't look as great on paper, even with a bad quarterback. Uh, Drew, the- Drew Locke's not a play, but Sutton is kind of like Devontae Parker light at this point where mm-hmm. he's shown you enough to me to where you just start him and that's it. He's a wide receiver 19 by consensus ranks this week. So he's not a top 10 option, but he's playable. Yeah, they, they don't have to be great targets for Sutton to catch it. No, no. And uh, we've we've seen kind of size rule with the Matthew Stafford, uh, Jeff Driscoll, David Blau situation. Galladay's put up more good games than bad with the backups just because he's Kenny Galladay. So Philip Lindsay, my start of the week. Mike said that we locked it in. Yeah. Texans are uh, 26th against opposing running backs. Royce Freeman is limited. This could be pretty much entirely Philip Lindsay in the backfield. Let's hope that's enough. I, I think it will be. Deshaun Watson, the very impressive win last week. He's in your lineup. So is DeAndre Hopkins. So decisions to be made for fantasy owners around Carlos Hyde and Will Fuller. Fuller, last week, very impressive. Showed you what you thought you'd see more than twice this year. But can you lean on it? No, I, I don't think you can lean on Will Fuller. Um, you, you're just you're playing with a low odds dice roll. You know, you're you're, you're sitting here saying, okay, I'm gonna roll a single die, and I if I get a two, I'm happy. Dude, his his latest game logs, and I know that injury is a factor because three weeks ago when he was one for six, he played on five percent of the snaps. He got hurt, but it's just a perfect snapshot of saying. Okay, one for six. The next game, seven for 140. And then he followed that up with one for eight. I won't be surprised that Denver covers this spread. I mean, it's a pretty big nine and a half points. Denver's defense is solid. I mean, against fantasy quarterbacks, they're fifth in the league. Wide receivers, they're sixth. Speaking to Jason's point of of casting that die, I don't know if I want to throw it out there hoping for a two against the sixth-ranked pass defense and a secondary option for Deshaun Watson. He's always good. He's he's always capable of giving you the monster play, but it's kind of like rolling out Robbie Anderson in a tough matchup. Yeah. You're like, well, don't really want to do it. You don't really want to do it. And then same with Kenny stills, Darren Fells always can catch a one yard touchdown and end with two for 14 and a touchdown. That's always a possibility. What do you do with Carlos Hyde? And that's, Duke Johnson. That's He's the biggest difficult. question to yeah. me are these two guys, because when I looked at this Vegas line and I say, okay, you've got a You've got a massive home favorite. That's where you play the running back. That's that's where just statistically, you know, you, you historically you run the numbers and you say running backs in big wins at home always have good fantasy output. So Carlos Hyde is interesting to me. I'd rather play a Carlos Hyde than an Alexander Madison hoping that something breaks his way. Hyde has been uh, – he was obviously very bad last week against New England. It was a Duke Johnson game. Um, that was a very specific game plan for New England is how I view that. Prior to that, you've got like medium to good games four weeks in a row. The Denver Broncos are not a great – they're just a middle-of-the-pack defense against running backs. So I think Carlos Hyde is a guy that you can you can flex – and hope that he gets a lot of the you know clock killing work. Yeah, the volume should be there. And he's he has looked okay this year. He hasn't, you know. I want to be like, well, he stinks, but the volume should be there. But he's actually looked good. So I'm not sitting here saying he's going to be a great fantasy option. But I do think you could play him over. You know, I question okay him or Bo Scarborough. Bo in a bad matchup. People are talking about playing Bo. I feel like I would rather have Carlos Hyde at home in a plus matchup I can agree with that yeah yeah I think it makes sense Dolphins three and nine taking on the Jets at four and eight the Jets are six point favorites against the vaunted Dolphins it should be an interesting game for fantasy purposes because it's just filled with I think opportunity for these quarterbacks Ryan Fitzpatrick Sam Darnold this week Sam Darnold at home he's our consensus QB nine Ryan Fitzpatrick Right now sitting at 16, but I think that uh, there's some upside there too. We've seen it 
in recent weeks with Ryan Fitzpatrick. Lev Bell situation, we've talked about it. He could be down with the sickness. Bilal Powell could take Ooh. over. What do you do with the running backs on, in Miami? Oh, Patrick Laird. I mm. mean, uh, Kalen Balazs is now on IR. And Patrick Laird, last week, did have a touchdown. No, thank you. Not really good on the uh, – <laughs> No, the Jets defense you. has been pretty stout against the run. Yes. Yeah, I mean, we've played the game the entire year of the starting Dolphin running back is going to get work and it doesn't just stop there. Yes, someone will touch the ball enough, but I don't even know if you're happy. Like, you know how every player out there in fantasy, if they get a touchdown, you're happy. Like you had a That's good week. true. I don't know that that's true either <laughs> because you've seen it a couple times with Kalen Balazs and even with Laird this last week where it's like, I don't think you hit double-digit points even with a touchdown. Yeah, I think Laird helps Fitzpatrick because you can only get better in the passing game at running back for Kalen for Balazs. Yeah, five targets. If you get you know Parker and Laird and Gasicki, there's opportunity there. Uh, but it's not in the way of starting Patrick Laird. I really like his line last week. He got 10 carries for five yards. Yes. <laughs> Very nice, averaging half All a yard of a sudden, Kalen Balazs looks pretty good, doesn't he? But he, he has a game. Last week, it was four for 43 through the air. He does have a game of six for 51 through the air a couple weeks ago against Buffalo. I agree. I think he helps Ryan Fitzpatrick far more than Kalen Balazs could help in the in the passing game. So. More, just, just more was, ammo for Fitzpatrick. Kalen Balazs was legitimately actively hurting Ryan Fitzpatrick in the passing game because yes. he would he would just drop. It, it, eventually, it became in his head because you know it, it didn't. Kalen Balazs has a pass catching ability coming into the year. It seemed, but goodness, well, he couldn't he couldn't actually catch any ball thrown his way. Talk to me why you like Robbie Anderson, Mike, as your start of the week. Jamison Crowder, what do we do there? These Jets wide receivers. So for me, it's just that Robbie Anderson has been getting far more and more involved the past three weeks. He's been usable. It was a touchdown or at least 80 yards in each of the last three weeks. Sam Darnold is also playing better. I mean, you you have the correlation of these two things happening. Meanwhile, Jamison Crowder, his targets are, are still there, but the target share has gone way down for Crowder as Sam Darnold has begun to lean more on Robbie Anderson. Then you have the matchup. The Dolphins, 27th against fantasy wide receivers, and they're, they're at home. I, I'm, I think that Robbie Anderson has a, a great shot here to have, uh, you know, at least it, he, I think his floor is safe to be a top 25-ish wide receiver, and he's Robbie Anderson in a positive matchup. We've seen that turn into huge numbers. Good chance that Miami keeps up in this game, too, the way they've been playing. Jamison Crowder, can you go back to the well with those target totals the last yes. two weeks? have both looked like massive plus matchups, but he hasn't hurt you. He's destroyed you. 73rd yes, and 89th at the position. I J guess my question is why go back to the well? You probably have an option that doesn't have a, a, a basement of 89. I would say the reason you go back to the well is, is targets and known talent of Crowder. Crowder is not – I mean, I think we would all agree – you don't say James Crowder is just a bad NFL wide receiver. No. He's fine. We've seen him be successful enough. He got nine targets last week. It turned into eight yards. That makes Matthew Laird look just phenomenal. Patrick Laird? Patrick Laird. Re look. Respect the man, Jason. Sure. <laughs> Patrick, I respect you. Um, but the reality is, the, the, you know, two bad games when the targets are still coming – and you know that he's a good wide receiver in real life. Well, it was and only four matchup, targets two weeks ago. Four, yeah, two weeks ago. Yeah. Last week was nine targets. But then you had the, the stretch run three weeks in a row where he was basically a wide receiver one every single week, never below 75 yards. I'm not sure you want to bank on uh, – like we haven't seen multiple receivers supply fantasy owners in New York. The last two weeks of resurgence for Robbie Anderson are not, I think, coincidentally – the two trash weeks for Jamison Crowder. Right. So that's my only concern there. Would you play, Jason, D.D. Westbrook, who's had two pretty nice finishes, 25th, 13th the last two weeks? Would you play D.D. or would you play Jamison Crowder with the target totals? Um, I would probably play D.D. Westbrook, but he doesn't have a great matchup. I mean, 
I'm not. I guess that means I'm. I'm really not excited about either of these guys. Give me Pascal, <laughs> or give me death. <laughs> Gasicki and Griffin. Can you play both of them? Yes, I, I like Gasicki more. Uh, the the Jets are. It, granted, the Jets are a tougher matchup. They're fifth against fantasy tight ends, but Gasicki is he's the number two weapon, and like that's locked in since uh, three top five finishes in the last five weeks. Y- yes, so I, um, now that his name is escaping me, the Dolphin who went down, the uh, uh, Preston Turner. Williams. Oh, We're, since Preston Williams went down, Mike Gasicki is now the number two option, and before that, like you saw Preston Williams and Devontae Parker getting enough work that. To, to be usable so it, with Fitzpatrick there's the quarterback there's enough there's enough ammunition for Gesicki to come through with another six to seven target game Miami has won three of their last five games and they beat the Jets in week nine to get that first W so we'll see what happens I think the line is seems a little aggressive for it, the Jets I agree I I think the Dolphins cover that and they're missing uh Jamal Adams the, yeah the Jets are hey before we move into the Ravens and Bills match I want to thank today's sponsor Noom Listen up, people getting in shape. It's not just about losing weight. It's about feeling better. Like You want to have more energy to keep up with the busy life. You want to f- fit better in those clothes. And Noom can help you do it. Noom is a habit-changing solution that helps us or helps users develop a new relationship with food. This is the great part about Noom. There's no food that's, oh, that's a good food. That's a bad food. That's an off-limits food. There's those restrictions and that mentality goes away when you're using Noom to track your meal habits. They help you uh, reevaluate portion size and see calorie density at a glance. Uh, popular diets out there, they also work with Noom. We've all signed up for the app. It's an easy process. It's, it's, it, it, it's a lot easier than you think to just, when you're sitting down to have your meal, pull out Noom, track. And, and then, they, and and then they care the end, about your goals. Yes. Yeah, yeah. They really help you personalize it. And then at the end of the day, you can look back, and you don't, it's not the, ah, oh, crap, what, what did I eat? What did I eat for lunch? How, how bad did I eat? What were my calories? You've got it all there, and Noom is helping you do that. You don't have to change it all in one day. Small steps make big progress. Sign up for your trial today at Noom. That's N-O-O-M dot com slash footballers. What do you have to lose? Visit Noom dot com slash footballers to start your trial today. That's Noom dot com slash footballers, the last weight loss program you'll need. And Foot Clan, look, if you've ever hosted a holiday get-together, you know a thing or two about the chaos. The Moors are hosting the footballers' Christmas party Prepare this for year, chaos. And we are already experiencing the chaos, but thankfully there's handy and easy and convenient way to book home cleanings on my schedule. Mm. I get to determine when people <laughs> show up, and when Brooks comes over to our house on that day, he's going to say, How, how's your house look so good? <laughs> And I'm not, spam. I'm not going to tell him it was no. handy. I'm not going to say it was handy. The day. I'm going to, I'm probably going to take credit. You'll turn to the camera and wink. Bing. Yeah. <laughs> Look in just 60 seconds, handy will match you to a top rated pro in your area. Their pros are background checked and you can compare profiles, read customer reviews. You can learn more about that background checks at handy.com slash trust and safety with dashes in between the words. Look, get your home clean anytime from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Seven days a week, subject to availability it, yeah, can, I mean, my wife and I just did this recently. It was a home run. It was easy. Super simple. We were super happy. Yeah, you can pay securely right in the app, even the tip. If you're not satisfied with the service, they'll book another pro to make it right at no extra charge. Get your first three-hour cleaning for only $29 when you sign up for a cleaning plan. Go to handy.com slash footballers and enter the promo code footballers. That's a three-hour of home cleaning for $29 with a cleaning plan at handy.com slash footballers promo code Footballers' terms and conditions apply. Visit Handy's website for more information. Handy, the most reliable name in house cleaning. All right, the Ravens at 10 and 2 take on the Bills at 9 and 3. Well, the Ravens are five and a half point favorites in Buffalo. It's Ravens are on fair. fire right now. Yes. We don't have questions about Lamar Jackson. He's in your lineup each and every week. You're also in the playoffs. Congratulations. He's averaging 74 rushing yards per game. Yeah. That's ridiculous. It's basically all of the projections that you could have extended from last year, and they all came true. Yeah. I, you I know rem- what I mean? I remember all of us trying to project Lamar Jackson, and you you go back. 
what was what was he doing? What, what were how was he pacing with the rushing yards? And you're like, I I can't give him this many rushing yards. No, there's was, there's just no way. Oh yeah, no, he he's doing it. He's, yeah, he's breaking football. He's breaking fantasy. But the real question mark for many a fantasy owner is what to do with Josh Allen, who has done a lot to get you to the fantasy playoffs. And uh, are we going to get an impressive week from him? He's averaging 30, uh, 35 rushing yards a game. He's been a top 15 quarterback in eight straight weeks. And that, that's that been with some difficult matchups where people have doubted him. Basically, Josh Allen, the way that this game can play out to where you're happy is what he's done many, many times this year, which is he only throws one passing touchdown. Right. But he ends up sneaking one in. He ends up with yards on the ground. He's not making a ton of mistakes, and you end up with a 25-point game from Josh Allen. Now, the Ravens, they've only given up one top 12 performance all year. Yeah, that's rough. And that's against Patrick Mahomes in week three. So push coming to shove here. I like the fact Josh Allen is at home in this game. I like the fact that the Bills have a defense that's it's pretty stout, and I think this is going to be a competitive matchup. But I still wonder if I'm going to get the upside from Josh Allen that I could get from another streaming option at the position. Yeah, he, he's really close. You know, I, I talk about Matt Ryan being someone I'm playing over the streamers. Josh Allen is a real big question mark. I do think he gets it done. I don't think he goes there and has a dud, but you're right talking about the upside. He's not going to go out there and have a four-touchdown game, uh, you know, the way that a Fitzpatrick could. Um, so I think this is a matter of your lineup and your matchup. If you are the six seed going against the one seed and that guy's just got a, an awesome lineup and you need to explode this week to get a win, that's where I'm going with one of the high volatility upside Ryan Fitzpatrick types over Josh Allen. If you've got a strong roster and you are favored to win, then I'm sticking with Josh Allen because I, I do think his floor is safe with his rushing ability. And I think this matchup is going to be a really fun, closer than expected matchup. And by closer than expected, I don't know if, I mean, the Ravens, I don't remember the last time they haven't blown someone out. Like that's how it feels. It's just every game is just they're so last great. week. Well, okay, the Niners <laughs> played them very, very well. Last but I think their field goal. average margin of victory, uh, yeah, is just it's it's outlandishly high. Even including the Niners' uh, closer game. Mike uh, with Devin Singletary, Jason start of the week sitting here at home. Ravens have a great uh, defense through and through all the positions, but giving up eighteen point three fantasy points per game to the running back. Singletary's been great. When you look at his game logs, though, you can't really bank on him getting into the end zone, at least in the rushing game. Uh, you're going to need production in the passing game, I think, to give you a nice baseline here. Uh, do you like him for a strong matchup the way Jason does? I I like him. I, I think I like him the way that Jason does, where I don't think Jason's projecting that Devin Singletary is about to have a monster game, but right. he's saying... I'm not benching Singletary against the Baltimore Ravens. Like it generally a matchup against the Ravens who are seventh against fantasy running backs, that is off putting. I might look at who else do I have on my bench. Maybe I'm pivoting to someone like Jamal Williams, but I'm still starting Singletary with top twenty four confidence because he's involved in all facets of the game of the and and he's a very, very good running back. Like I think Singletary can get enough done. You are right about the touchdowns because he has to deal with something at the goal line much like Carolina Panthers running backs used to deal with where you would see their touchdowns low because the quarterback keeps stealing them. Mm -hmm. So it, his upside is, is certainly capped, but I'm still going to play Singletary this week. Right now we have Singletary as the RB21 on the week, Mark Ingram as the RB15. I want to talk about John Brown for a second. His target counts have plummeted in the last two weeks. In week 10, he had 11. In week uh, 11, he had 14 Last two weeks, just four targets in each of those games. The target share uh, has gone significantly down for John Brown, and this is not a favorable matchup. Do you like John Brown, or would you go with options like Tyler Boyd and Kenny Galladay? I would go with Tyler Boyd over John Brown. It's, it's, <laughs> you can see what's happening. When John Brown has a tougher DB matchup, mm -hmm. and it's, it's not necessarily that John Brown is getting shut down. It's Josh Allen is... He has uh, 
pulled back from some of his ways as a rookie where he just decides that he's going to throw the ball anyways, even though every alarm in his head is saying he shouldn't throw this ball, which that's a credit. Josh Allen has is one of the most improved players uh, at, at the quarterback position this year. And this is another tough matchup for, for John Brown against this Ravens secondary. And it, it's not that I'm going to force Cole Beasley into my lineup by any means, but you see games where John Brown has tough coverage. Like it was uh, against Denver. You have Chris Harris, Dallas, their secondary is pretty strong despite what Allen Robinson just did to them. And then Cole Beasley feasts because he's the underneath guy who's running free and running open. Yeah, and, and they won the last two games utilizing Cole Beasley underneath and not going John Brown's way. So, yeah, I would, I would rather pivot away from John Brown in this matchup. Josh Allen's completion percentage, thank you, Cole Beasley, has improved from 52.8% <laughs> to 61.5% year, right. year over okay. year. Closer, a, warmer. Yeah. It's a pretty big jump for a player that has so many other intangibles to his game. Uh, pretty worried about Hollywood Brown. I don't think you can take a shot on him this week between Tredavious White and the ever always injured Hollywood Brown. He was added to the report again this week on Thursday, added on Thursday with an ankle injury. That's rough. He man. is the new Deshaun Jackson in the sense he, that he wow. is he a – Really, he's like I want to be exactly like DJ in every way. When he's on the field, he's pretty darn good, and nobody is nobody can keep up with him speed wise. Um, so it's one of those where if you want to take a shot on a guy, I mean, this matchup looks bad if he's out there, but he might not even be out there. I this mean, is he was why added I, to the um, practice report. I'm late. out, man. This is why I'm not fast. I don't want to get hurt. <laughs> right. I, I always say that I, I know that I will not tear an ACL. Yeah. Because I cannot Impossible. move strong enough to tear it. All right, Mark Andrews, you got to play him. He's been yep. your tight end all year long. And uh, let's move on. Chargers, 4-8. and eight. Jags, 4-8. and eight. Here we are. Chargers, three-point favorites in Jacksonville. It's a 43-point over under. It's a matchup between one of the most beloved quarterbacks yeah. in the NFL against one of the... <laughs> Absolute most despised quarterbacks in the NFL. <laughs> would we all agree? With uh, I think you would agree the most. Gardner Minshew ver versus Philip Rivers, mm. despised by my, uh, by Jason, and I guess probably more than just Jason. Second most interceptions in the NFL. The team has been a disappointment. I think we came into the season saying, "Hey, the Chargers could be a." I think before the Melvin Gordon holdout happened, you looked at their roster. Yep. You looked at what Mike Williams did last year, what that defense represented, the return of Hunter Henry. Phillip Rivers had been playing very well, and you said Super Bowl contending Absolutely. Team. And here you are at 4-8, so things change quick. The I, ja Jacksonville thought they had a quarterback in Nick Foles, and now they're back to Gardner. I think defense is like Phillip Rivers, Jay. You, oh, because they, he's, he's very kind to them. Yeah, he, he gives them the ball a lot this season. That is absolutely true. So are you saying you can play the Jaguars DST this week? They are yes. at home against a very giving quarterback. Yes. It's, know, I, it's the season. I just try to avoid this game for a lot of reasons. I mean, maybe you can. I mean, Jacksonville's D's just been so shaky in certain games. I think you can try. Yeah, Melvin I mean, Gordon and Fournette are both going to be in your lineup, Mel right? Melvin Gordon it should have an excellent game. He has been trending in the right direction. Now Miles Jack is out. That's another reason the, I wouldn't for the touch Jaguars. the Jacksonville yeah, defense. I, I, I get that. But Melvin Gordon and Austin Eckler, the, the run game should work per, should work perfectly fine. Jacksonville is 27th against fantasy running backs. They have completely fallen apart there, and now they're worse. So I guess I'm uh, you've, you've convinced me, Andy. I'm not playing the Jags. All right, Austin Eckler, you play him. Yes. Yeah. Especially PPR dominating leagues. Uh, Keenan Allen. He's scored in two straight games. Hooray! Yeah, I'm I'm back in on Keenan. I I never really left Keenan Allen. It's more Keenan Allen's back in. He Ke left Keenan you for left, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> no, Keenan Keenan is a, a a weekly start. Um, you know, we talked about this when he was in his bad stretch that he goes through stretches. You go back the last several years. He's like got oh, three bad games in a row, four or five great games in a row, then three bad games, then six great games. It's just weird, but it's happened for so long now, and he's in the middle of a hot hot streak. Yeah. One, one of the things that's been asked a lot is, hey, 
<laughs> with the return of Gardner Minshew versus Nick Foles, do you still have confidence in DJ Chark? Well, in the context of that question directly, I do. In the context of this matchup, I don't have as much confidence in DJ Chark as maybe you two do. Right. Uh, Casey Hayward, he's going to face Casey in this game. Uh, one of the best corners in football. I just, I think he can get you 60 yards. I just don't know if he's going to score. I'm just, I don't think there's a ceiling this week for DJ Chark. That's my concern. Do you guys completely disagree? Uh, I, I don't disagree uh, at all. I, I actually don't like DJ Chark this week. Um, not saying you, you should bench him outright. But if you have other good options, I would be willing to. Because if you look, Chark, you know, I, I, I guess I kind of disagree in the sense that Chark always has the upside because of his speed and height to go catch deep, long balls and have a great game. But if he doesn't catch the deep, long touchdowns, you're really, really disappointed more often than you thought. He got off to such a hot start. You know, he had five touchdowns in the first five games, and it just became he's auto. And then he's had a couple big games. But look since week four. Since week four, I think he's had three games over 55 yards. That's – no mm. no, thank you. And now in a bad matchup. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Robert Woods against Seattle this week, or do you play DJ Chark? Robert Woods. Cortland Sutton, we just talked about him, or DJ Chark. There's a tough decision for you. That is tough. I think they're they're both very similar to me. I, I guess I go Sutton. Mm. John Brown. Oh, no, I, I wouldn't go that far. Okay. DJ Chark for sure. Okay. Hunter Henry, auto start. Hopefully he bounces back for you. This is a, t this is a matchup between two teams that have lost seven straight games combined. Uh, so we'll see. Somebody has to win, right? Well, technically, no. Technically, no. Titans at seven and five. Raiders at six and six. <sighs> All right. The Titans are two and a, <laughs> Titans are two and a half point is favorites. Is that a Raiders side? Yeah, it's a fatigue. It's a Raiders annoying me fatigue. Like if Derek Carr hasn't hurt me in fantasy because I haven't played him, but he's hurt my heart a little bit because I I wanted to believe that this was a different Derek Carr, and it kind of was for the first half of the year. They were winning games. At 6-6, six and six, they still have a solid season, but these last two weeks have been really hard to watch. Tyrell Williams has had no production because Derek Carr hasn't had – Hasn't given him an opportunity, and you're staring at this roster saying, well, you play Derek Waller every week, and you play Josh Jacobs, and you move on, and that's kind of where you're at. How much confidence can you have in Tyrell? I feel like Derek Carr, is he's the type of guy that when he's cooking, like he refuses to salt anything. He's just like, well, these French fries, don't you dare They're put, good enough? Yeah, don't put salt on those. That's dangerous. I'm trying to figure out what that kind of person is. What do you bland oh, like safe, a bland person boring okay bland <laughs> safe boring well do you I described it pretty well <laughs> yeah. uh but Tyrell I mean he is basically a shot that's what he's at right now he started the year on fire but it was touchdown dependency now he's got you know fewer than seven targets every game from weeks eight through 13 to me he's just a shot yeah and it's a shot I'm not gonna take right now yeah I'm, I'm gonna focus uh, I mean Look, he very well might have a similar, maybe even a better game than Darren Waller, but when you're talking about the tight end position, all of a sudden Darren Waller's uh, 66 yards becomes a great game. Uh, as, you know, So uh, Darren Waller's a great play this week. The Titans are surprisingly bad uh, against the tight end position outside of Darren Waller and, and, and Josh Jacobs, but as a receiving option. Well, Josh Jacobs is even questionable. He's missing a lot of practice. Uh, with the injury, now the injury got upgraded, so right. to speak, over the news that he's playing with some kind of break in his shoulder. Like Josh Jacobs is not a lock to play this weekend. That's that's worth noting. So if if he does not play, would you be willing to start Jalen yeah. Richard? I'd be willing to start DeAndre Washington and Jalen Richard. Yes, both of them. Yeah, like I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna play both at the same time. But like, so our listener league, I have Josh Jacobs. And I've got DeAndre Washington sitting on my bench, the, the handcuff just in case. And the options, of course, in the waiver wire are trash. So, yeah, I'm, I'm putting Washington in. Yeah, it's, it's kind of stay away from both for me if Jacobs is out. Because the, the Chargers defense is strong. 
and they're going to split time in that backfield. So the Titans. I'm sorry, the tit tit the Titans yeah. defense. So I I just like he. I'd rather play Powell by himself than one of those two guys. Sure, yeah. I can agree with that. Henry, he's an auto start. Yes, he's he, I, I I he's good. <laughs> Deep cutting analysis. Stunning. Mm -hmm. AJ Brown, any yeah. thought there? I. Yeah, I mean, look, we we talked about Tannehill being a, a decent streaming option, and uh, you know if that's true, it's going to probably come alongside AJ Brown. AJ Brown has had several really big games. I mean, they don't come the way that fantasy owners want. It's not high target volume. It's not you know the clear go to guy where you just week in week out you've got a safe floor with the high upside. There is no safe floor with a guy who's you know you you have a good game when he gets four receptions because he's got a ton of yards and a touchdown or two. I think this is the type of matchup, though, where A.J. Brown could have a really strong game. So he is the lower end dart throw when you need a big upside play. You'd That's play A.J. Him. Brown over Tyrell? Yeah, I would. Okay. The Chiefs at 8-4 and four take on the – oh, by the way, don't play Jonah Smith. He doesn't get targeted anymore. Th those days might have been more Mariota-related than we thought. Chiefs eight and four, Patriots ten and two. This game's in New England. It's a pretty exciting ball game to see what happens. I heard this absolutely mind blowing stat. I don't know if you overheard this, Judge Giamatti in the office. I was telling the guys this yesterday. When Julian Edelman and Tom Brady play at the exact same time, so they're both active for a home game, they have like a ten plus year winning streak. They've won like forty two consecutive games together at home. It's ridiculous. But That's what just, was the other stat about Andy Reid coming off a bye? You mean the, he came off the bye last week? Oh. <laughs> so never mind. Yeah, never mind. You can still read it. It's real cool. Well, it's I don't, I don't have it here in the notes because it wasn't relevant. But the Chiefs at 8-4, <laughs> they, they are a threat to New England here to break that streak because we will have Julian Edelman and Tom Brady together. But Tom Brady, it's been rough. Now, last week he had his best fantasy game, I think, since – Maybe week two or something oh, like that. Yeah, kind of the you same hit, way that Dak that had drop a good again? game. Hmm? Yeah, well, the truth Please. is, yeah, it, it still counted. Oh, the garbage man can. Yes. It still counted. But they're but, struggling on offense. But you can't count on garbage time from Tom Brady. Yeah, certainly not from the Patriots. You can't assume they're going to be down big and need to come back and throw the ball. The Chiefs seem like one of those teams where they've got a great offense, they're going to keep up, you're going to have to keep up, not a great defense, but the reality is over the last half of the year, the the Chiefs have been pretty darn good against the opposing passing game. Ever since teams figured out the way to beat the Chiefs is to grind it on the ground. This is why I still think this could be a Sony Michelle game plan against the Chiefs. Um, the, you know, they haven't given up a whole lot of big fantasy performances to quarterbacks, so I, I'm not loving Tom Brady in this matchup. Well, unfortunately, and I think Jason illustrated it, the decisions you're making at the running back position for both teams have a lot to do with, you know, there's not a lot of confidence. There's nobody no. you're going to lock in, and they're dependent on game script and how you believe the game's going to play out. I tend to believe that this is not going to be a Sony game because I don't think that you can – there's not enough – time in that game where I believe uh, Sony's going to be out there. But it's just what you believe about the game script. Here, Here's what it is. If New England's ahead and they want to keep Mahomes off the field, they're going to use Sony Michelle. If New England's behind, you're going to get what you got last week and it's 100% James White and no mm -hmm. Sony Michelle. Yep. So it has a lot to do with how you think the game's going to play out. We have James, uh, James White and Sony Michelle ranked right near each other, both as solid RB, you know, two, three options. Um, but one of these guys is going to have a bad game. Well, in, in James White's corner is the fact that the Chiefs have allowed 478 receiving yards to running back since week six. It's the most in the NFL. So there may be an opportunity for him if the game script goes that direction. We've talked a lot about the running backs in Kansas City. We, I'm out. What are you doing? I mean, this is just not an upside situation. LaShawn McCoy... He faced Oakland last week, 5 for 10. Yeah, he scored 3 for 20 on three targets. I don't want Look, any of that. Think think about what has happened with LaShawn McCoy. Okay, He got 
benched while hell he was a healthy scratch. No, no, that was Jason. Oh, but that was to prepare him for games like this. That was to be well rested in case yeah. they need him later. Uh, think about not having. And they need him now. You have Damian Williams get injured and Daryl Williams get injured in a game that is perfect for Shady, and they give him five carries. Well, they wanted to see what Darwin Thompson. They're still could do. saving him. <laughs> They're just saving him for when this is, someday they are saving him. Like this is this is the Mighty Ducks two situation, where they have one goalie the entire time, and then when it really comes down to it, that one carry, that one carry to win the game, it'll go to Shady McCoy. We had some questions on the serious show yesterday related to Tyreek Hill and whether you'd play him over guys like Odell Beckham. I think you have to play him in this matchup. Tyreek offers too much explosiveness. Uh, there's an opportunity there. We saw it last week. Big plays did happen against New England last week. I'm taking the Chiefs to win. You're taking the Chiefs to win yeah. this game on the road. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes has been not the same as last year. Single touchdown pass in four of his past six games. What's interesting. But always has upside. So it, it, the past couple of days, you know, at least on the, on the series show yesterday, we were talking about guys we're disappointed in. It's it's that time of the year. You're in the playoffs of and there's a lot of people who are not in the playoffs. You're looking back. Who is disappointing? How did how has no one really brought up Mahomes as disappointing? When you drafted Mahomes in the second, third round, mm. are you actually happy you did that? I think mostly. I mean, you have a you have the spell during the middle of the season with the injury. I mean, you you throw out the Denver game, right? But yeah, so, so one, two, three, <clears throat> four, five games of one or fewer touchdowns from Patrick Mahomes yeah, through but, the air. Pass. But fantasy finish wise. He's only had one game outside the top twelve. But when, you don't draft Mahomes to be a top no, you to don't. be a number ten quarterback on the week. You don't. But yeah, I don't know. I, I think he I would say he's disappointing, yes. Okay. I would say a mild disappointment, but always upside. Sammy Watkins, I will never play okay. for as long as I live under okay. any circumstance, even if he plays quarterback. He did torch the Patriots last time they played. I don't care. Okay. I don't really, I don't care either. I'm not playing him. Yeah, I'm not playing him. I, I, you know, we have a silly water bet about whether he'll be in the top 45 <laughs> wide receivers. But no, you're not. You're not playing him. Sure, he can have a good game. Don't don't do that to yourself by rostering him. Yeah, yeah. We need to talk about this next matchup. The Steelers at seven and five go to Arizona to take on the Cardinals. Mm. Cardinals are. Well, the Steelers are two and a half point road favorites. So many disappointed groans from it's Jason. It's a forty three and a half point over under. He's just reacting. I'm just he's uh, just react. He's just very, a man. Okay. Sometimes you wear your emotions <laughs> out on your sleeve, and he's in that state of mind with the playoffs and what happened. Philip Rivers mm -hmm. and my Cardinals garbage time. He five really five losses in a row, and they stink. For some reason, he decided to get mad at Michael Gallup. Oh no, Ma Michael Gallup got <laughs> mad at me. I didn't get mad at Michael Gallup. I, we I didn't was, mention that yet, right? Not no, yet. We did yeah, not. so Jason decided to viscerally, once again, wear the emotions on his sleeve, and he just said, garbage time pisses me off, and posted it, and Michael Gallup decided to How reply. How did Gallup find that tweet? I don't know. He wasn't tagged in it, but uh, Gallup... Somebody must have tagged him in yeah, it. Yeah, Gallup uh, quote tweeted it and was like, if the other defensive stars are on the field, is it really garbage time? And it's, yes. Well, and when you're down, like... Three possessions. The answer is yes. It is still garbage time. That late in the game. But I get it. I mean, look, at the very end of the game, they, you know, kicked it onside to try to recover, to try to have a Hail Mary. So whatever. All right. James Conner is out in this game. Benny Snell, he's had 16 plus carries in three of the last four games. Arizona, the matchup's great. Benny Snell can be in your lineup. Yes. Uh, we have him just outside the top 24. He's the RB26 on the week. So when you're looking at start-sit decisions, he's the best running back play in this game. There's no confidence, I think, from this group of three analysts in the Cardinals' backfield, Kenyon Drake, David Johnson, Chase Edmonds. If you're playing one because you're in a league that forces you to play a Cardinals running back, it would be it's Drake. Kenyon Drake. Kyler Murray, can you trust him at home in this matchup against a very good Steelers defense? <sighs> Man, Last week was very disappointing, but he has been able to put up good games against great defenses. The 49ers two different times. Baltimore, he had a nice game against. What do you think? Uh, look, I've got him as my quarterback 13 this week, right behind Ryan Tannehill. If you've got a great streaming option, maybe put him ahead. But otherwise, I think he is a guy that can play. When you have the ability to run the ball at the quarterback position, it's kind of similar to what we were talking about with Josh, 
Josh Allen. You you just have a, a really high baseline. Now, last week it didn't happen, but last week was also – I mean, that was an embarrassment. That was that was a real – no Cardinals showed up to play in that game. Uh, I, I don't expect that to be a back-to-back -back, uh, thing against a team like the Steelers that are – A much better defense than the Rams. A better defense, but I It should I be don't... a more competitive game exactly. because of Duck Hodges. I mean, there are – there are some starting the Cardinals defense this week, which seems like a shock, right? But the Cardinals defense um, has had a handful of performances that mattered for fantasy. And when you look at Duck Hodges, you're kind of like, well, could this be one of them? I mean, they played Tampa Bay. They were a top 12 defense. They played the Giants. They were a top 12 defense at home. Maybe they could do that. Now, Duck Hodges, on the other hand, some people probably thinking about streaming him against Arizona. <laughs> it is. And I, don't, I don't blame him. It's the best matchup in fantasy football. Yeah, there's no team that gives up uh, more fantasy points to the quarterback, and uh, it's just been really, really easy to pick them apart, which makes players like James Washington and Deontay Johnson both interesting to me. Juju's not going to be out there again. Deontay Johnson actually outpaced James Washington in targets last week, but Washington was the one actually catching the targets and doing something with them. And the elephant in the room. Mm, the dance. <laughs> Do you throw on the disco and roll with Vance McDonald? It's the best matchup for quarterbacks against the Cardinals. It's also by far the best matchup for tight ends. But Vance McDonald... I'm just not impressed with him. He has done literally nothing of note this year. Oh, I apologize. Week two, he had the, the multi-touchdown game. But since then, it's maybe he hits 30 yards. Yeah, I'm I'm fine putting him in. Yeah. I, really, yeah. I really am. I get it. He has not been great. You just said maybe 30 yards. He had, you know, you go back five games ago, he had a, th you know, three five games ago to three games ago, he had a three-game stretch, seven targets in a row. Three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back games of seven targets. That's phenomenal. In those games, he ended so up with 30 and 33 yards. It was garbage nothingness. And those were Mason games, right? Sure, but, I mean, the, the point is, if he's involved in an offense and it's against the Arizona Cardinals, I think you can play him. I'm not playing him over everybody. If Jack Doyle's out there, I'm going to grab Jack Doyle. I'm going to play him for sure over Vance McDonald. But if you have no options, or maybe this is more of a DFS play when you want the – the cheapest of Mike Gesicki cheap. versus the Jets or Vance McDonald. I'll that's, take Gesicki. That's really close to me. Um, if it's DFS, I'm building lineups with both. It's uh, just Kyle Rudolph yeah, or play. Mike Gesicki. Or, uh, sorry, or Vance McDonald. <laughs> Kyle Rudolph, if, <laughs> I, I assume Thielen's going to be out. Jacob Hollister against uh, the Rams or Vance McDonald. Vance. I'll play Hollister. I guess I'm just not as enthusiastic, but there's no reason I shouldn't be. It's just that Vance is going to have to score. That there's not enough passing volume and what they need to do in this game. Duck Hodges, the freedom they give him. I think Vance has to score, which is super easy against Arizona. It's super easy. If yeah. you're a tight end. Um, they have like a BOGO. Buy one, get one free. If you get the first one, they'll give you one later Next, in the game. Yes, come on in. Higby, Dwelly, it doesn't matter. They give you they give you two first. Um, all right, let's move on. Uh, by the way, real quick, Christian Kirk is at our wide receiver 27 on the week. Really disappointing game last week, but he was tied up with Jalen Ramsey for a lot of that game. Are you confident enough to play Kirk at home with Kyler in this one? Not, I'm not super excited about it. I think the Steelers' defense is very legit since they've gotten Minka Fitzpatrick. He is a guy you can start in a flex, but I would hope I have better options. What well, seems like a wild anomaly and because the sample is far too small at this point. Christian Kirk this year has been far better on the road. Yeah, I, I can see that. His three good games have been on the road. He hasn't done much at home. Uh, A.J. Brown or Christian Kirk? A.J. Brown. Really? I'll, I'll play Christian Kirk. I think I'll play Kirk. All right. Hey. Let's move on. Sunday night football, Seahawks, Rams. Just talked about it. Seahawks at 10-2, and two, taking on the Rams at 7-5. and five. Rams are one-point home favorites. Here we go. Russell Wilson, the ping pong ball for fantasy owners of late. He's averaging the most passing yards. Uh, ping pong balls go back and forth. Yeah. It's, it's really just been hanging out on one side. Oh, you say he's been more of a stink? Yes. A stink? Yeah. Stunk. Yeah. He <laughs> is a, he's averaging the most passing yards per game, highest quarterback rating, and lowest interception rate of his career. That's why he's an MVP candidate right now. 
against the Rams in week five, 268 yards and four touchdowns. Chris Carson and Rashad Penny combined for 38 carries last week, two touchdowns on the ground. Penny had another through the air. Both of those guys are playable to me in this in this matchup. Yeah, I, I agree. Chris Carson is a guy that you have to continue to start, and Rashad Penny has worked himself into a guy that you can start if you're in need at the position. I thought about what it would take for me to make Todd Gurley a start of the week this week. Like <laughs> I, I have start of the week type of confidence in Todd Gurley. The production has been better. Um, I bought over 100 total yards when we did buy sell, I think two days ago. So I'm in on Todd Gurley this week. Mike, Jason, you guys sold it. You heard, uh, <laughs> what was it, Sean McVay come out and say, what's been the key to getting Gurley more work? And he said, uh, not being an idiot, which is kind of finally vocalizing fantasy football yeah. with fans in that equation. 19 carries last week, 25 in week 11. Safe. Would you at least throw him into the yeah, safe category? Yeah, I'll I, do that. I think he's safe. He's he's my running back 14 on the week, so I don't think he's a guy that you're going to bench. Um, but, you know, you you the, my worry here is simply that if the Seahawks get up, that's when they tend to, uh, I guess, quote, be an idiot um, because, you know, you've seen them go away from Gurley uh, when, they're, when they're down and he's not as involved in the passing game. But that's not necessarily what's going to happen here. The Seahawks. Yeah, the Rams are favored. I, which, I mean, I'm not. I'm not the the Vegas line expert, but I was was really surprised. I just think like, I picked the, the Rams to win. The Rams, hmm. Vegas is saying, are going to score more points than the Seahawks, and I. That just feels <laughs> that's, incorrect. That's how a win works. Ex exactly. It just feels. <laughs> Did you just incorrect. say that's how a win works. So you take the Seahawks. I like the Rams in this game, Mike. As in who's going to win? I'm, yeah, I it's picked, basically a, a heads up. Yeah, I took the Seahawks to win. The The real wild card decisions for me in this matchup, and which is we're in a bizarro land that we are here. Tyler Lockett, Cooper Cup, the number one wide receivers for these respective teams who these dudes have been awesome through stretches. They have evaporated into just miss. Cooper Cup, fewer than 70 receiving yards in four Straight games, Tyler Lockett with the literal goose egg last week, destroying the souls and playoff chances of many teams. I have far more confidence in Cup on the oh, basis than Lockett, than Lockett okay. because you know first, uh, I think the Rams got some things figured out last week. Cooper Cup, we have ranked higher than Lockett. Lockett is a, we just don't know what he's dealing with. First, he's dealing with this contusion that sends him to the hospital. Then he's dealing with an illness and was super sick and was out there for the majority of the game but didn't see targets. Like, I have more confidence playing DK Metcalf than Tyler Lockett this week. Wow. No. I do. Real? Absolutely. Yeah. I don't blame you. Yeah, you were talking about guaranteed targets and production. Metcalf gets end zone targets every week. He seems to be a guy that they go to on third down. I like Metcalf more than Lockett. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess it makes sense with those last three games. Lockett uh, over the last five games, and keep in mind this includes when he was the wide receiver one against Tampa Bay, is on average the wide receiver 34. Um, you yeah, know, there's just no confidence. Now, on the Rams side, do you still have more confidence in Cooper Cup than Robert Woods? Not more. I have about the same. Those two guys I'm starting for sure. None in Brandon Cooks at all. Target counts for Robert Woods are insane. 11, 9, and thir uh, 18, 18 in the last three games. He's so averaging 16.5 fantasy points per game pretty consistently through that stretch. So uh, Robert Woods seems like a guy that you should be starting. You asked the question about Vance McDonald. If Gerald Everett sits, which he didn't practice on Wednesday or Thursday, I'd play Tyler Higby over Vance McDonald. I would too. Seattle is atrocious against tight ends, not to the degree of Arizona, but pretty close. And Higby is coming off a really strong game, utilized in this offense. I don't think and, I'd play him over Hollister. I'd probably honestly, play Hollister over him. It, it, it not just the performance by Higby this this past week where he, he destroyed the Cardinals, but this week we have we've seen a transition where Gerald Everett was uh, the fantasy community, we all wanted Gerald Everett to become something, and it's taken years. But this this year, he finally was putting up games. He was seeing targets. Tyler Higby is seeing targets. Like what I'm saying by that is, we've seen a shift that tight ends are actually being used now. There has this. been an awakening. <laughs> sure, they they're actually being used in this offense. 
And if Tyler Higby's the lone man, then yeah, I'd, I I would play him with top ten confidence. Yeah, yeah, he was he was the uh, honorary start of the week. I just yeah. didn't know what's going on with Everett. Hollister, you can play. Yep. Any world yep. where you can play Brandon Cooks? Because no, I don't think so. No, I don't think so either. I mean, Brandon Cooks over John Ross. I'll go there. Yeah, oh, you found it. <laughs> All right, last one. Monday Night Football, Giants 2-10, and 10, Eagles 5-7. and seven. Eagles with a chance to tie the Cowboys at 6-7 and seven atop the NFC East that the Redskins are going to win. Rebranded NFC least, am I right? Oh, um, high five, bro. Yeah. I think you might have. There's no way you didn't steal that. No, no. Oh, that's a, that's a Jason that original? Was right, that was right off the oh, dome. It's just, it was pretty Easy. Yeah, it's genius. I'll be honest. I, no, didn't, I think genius. I didn't dig deep for that one. That was just right. You there. added an L to the front. Of Which is revision. what they've all been doing. Oh. Oh! Hi -hi. Whoa, there it is. All right. <laughs> Eagles are ten point favorites. I like them to cover. It's Eli Manning's return. Most likely Daniel Jones not expected to play. Carson Wentz, my start of the week. Giants are Incredibly consistent in giving up top 10 performances to opposing fantasy quarterbacks. It's one of their best features it's for one fantasy. Of, one of their trademarks. Yes. Uh, 45 and a half point over under in this game. It looks like Miles Sanders will be the main man in the Philly backfield. Excellent. Saquon Barkley. Yesterday on the Sirius show, we talked about players that have been the most disappointing on the season. I brought up Odell. Jason brought up Saquon. I mean, you draft him to be the number one guy, and you haven't gotten that kind of performance. He's been outside the top 20 for four consecutive starts. He was only outside the top 20 once all last year. Yeah, it's not good. It's not good, and I, I don't know how limited he is with injury. I don't know how much of it is quarterback shift, and maybe you get a little boost with Eli Manning and his uh, desire to not be hit repeatedly by Philly's uh, pass rush. Maybe he drops it to Saquon. I think Saquon's certainly – you're going to play him. I mean, he's a top 12 guy, but pretty close to where I expect Miles Sanders to be this week in between the two. Yeah, I mean, I, I would I would clearly go Saquon over Miles Sanders, um, but sure they they could be near each other. I do expect a top twenty performance from Saquon with all the dump offs expected from Eli Manning. It's not a great matchup. The Eagles are very stout against the run, but if you do separate kind of the first half versus the second half of the year with the Eagles, they were much much better against the run that first half. The last. A uh, little while, you know, the Chicago uh, carved them up. Seattle carved them up. So they can be beaten on the ground, and hopefully Saquon is just getting more targets, which I we expect from Eli. There were plenty of games last year where Saquon wasn't a great runner because the offensive line in the, in the, the situation the Giants put him in. But he was never outside the top 20 because the, the target volume was so high. Yep. So you got to hope for that. At wide receiver, Alshon, my start of the week. Love him this week. The Giants uh, have been friendly to opposing wide receivers to the tune of the second worst in football. 35.1 points per game given up to the position. Can you play anybody outside of Alshon? Would you take your shot on Nelson Aguilar as a flex this week? Nope. All right. It's not preferred. I, I don't think it's a... Not recommended by doctors. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what I mean Side by that is... include like... vomiting, diarrhea... <laughs> And fantasy losses. What I yes. mean is, I don't. It, there's there are situations where I will play him. I'm not like blacklisting him. Like, AJ Brown, like Sammy Aguilar. Watkins. Uh, AJ Brown, Sammy Watkins, or Nelson Aguilar. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> Nelson Aguilar. Yeah, there you go. On the other side of the ball, though, give more, me Sammy. <laughs> are you saying Jason? A, no, a Nelson Aguilar versus Sammy Watkins bet. Yes. <laughs> are we doing another one? Oh. Water bet. Oh, yeah. Give me all the bottom feeding bets I can get. Oh, man. I just, to me, I just want you to suffer at Sammy's hand, and I will take any chance and provision to do so. Yeah, that's fine. Nelson Aguilar is my wide receiver 67. What do you do on the other side of the ball with the wide receivers? Eli coming back. Oof. Sterling Shepard. The Eagles can be beat at the wide receiver position. It looked like they were starting to get things together and then new england and miami <laughs> came through and kind of uh, found some cracks in the defense once again i did i just bet on nelson aguilar you certainly yeah. did. are you realizing what you you you're waking every, up what have i done every bet for me is only against sammy i didn't even put it into my head that i just bet on nelson aguilar to do something yeah 
Good all luck right, with sorry, that. sorry, Mike, to submarine the conversation. It's, it's all right. I think you can play Shepard, and it's it's tough to get Darius Slayton in there. Who like if Daniel Jones was the quarterback, I would have at least some mild interest in Darius Slayton, who's been very good as a rookie. But now with the switch back to Eli, I I know he'll throw it to Shepard. And I know he'll throw it to Evan Ingram, who is supposed to be back. Allegedly. I think Golden Tate's undervalued this week. And he's I would getting play, masked by the concussion, but he's practicing in full. Yeah. I would rather play Tate than Darius Slayton. Yeah, I, I, I would be willing to play Shepard and Golden Tate. I'm not playing Darius Slayton, and this might be surprising. I'm not going to play Evan Ingram. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm a little bit more worried about Evan Ingram coming off of the injury. Um, you know, this isn't a great plus matchup, anyways. Um, the, no, Eagles top ten against uh, f- opposing tight ends. Exactly. So in a in a difficult matchup, right off the injury, while there are other Jack Doyle esque, and it's Monday night. I mean, your your method with not playing Ingram is the definitely the easiest one for fantasy owners. You don't need to have a Monday night backup plan, right? I mean, let's just pretend you do go into Monday night and you've got Ingram and Dallas Goddard, and Ingram's active. Do you want to play? Who do you want to play? Right. If if they're both active. I would probably prefer Dallas Goddard, but it's close. Now, let's say Evan Ingram is uh, inactive in warm-ups. It didn't work out as well as they thought, and so he's gone. And now you're rolling Rhett Ellison against a really good top-10 tight end defense. Maybe yeah. Rhett. Is Rhett healthy? Well, sure. He's, I, he's missed the past two weeks, oh, so it's Caden been a rookie. Caden Smith. Caden yeah. yeah. Caden Smith. Who Caden Smith actually Has up? Caden Smith run around with Eli Manning on the field before in his career? That I probably not cannot tell you. Yeah, I so, can. I can tell you though that he had six for seventy last week. Ingram has upside that other tight ends don't have yes. because he's explosive. But you're also talking about you know you're splitting the pie up. Okay, well you know Shepard's interesting and Ooh, Saquon Shepherd needs Shepard pie. Oh yeah, nice enough. That's pretty you. good. Um, but there's just too many. You know Saquon more targets. Shepard Tate, um, Slayton, and now you're talking about Evan Ingram in a yeah. matchup that I don't like. It's just not it, – it, make it easier on yourself this week, I would say. There's some other streaming options that I prefer. Mike, do you wait on Ingram or you just play Gasicki? Uh, you seem like the most sympathetic to Ingram starting. Because, because Ingram – I mean, I'm, I'm a little biased because I drafted him in a dynasty league, so I have he has a soft spot in my heart because I've experienced the massive games that Evan Ingram can give you. I think I would play Gasicki, though. Yeah, I mean, there's just still a chance that Ingram gets re-injured. Too. Yeah. Ballers on a Budget, presented by FanDuel. All right, go to FanDuel.com slash Ballers. Enter the Fantasy Footballers Leaderboard Series for this week. My Ballers on a Budget pick. It's Emmanuel Sanders at just 5,900 buckaroos against New Orleans. Emmanuel Sanders runs from the slot uh, so often. I think it's over 40% of the time for San Francisco. He was on the field for 98% of snaps last week. I think he's being undervalued this week. Everybody's eyes on Debo Samuel. There's no reason this can't be an Emmanuel Sanders week, and he is cheap. So I'm going to take my shot on him against New Orleans. I worry because of the three-way pie split between Kittle, Emmanuel Sanders, and Debo about this. But at the same time, there's on, on you know if if Lattimore – is really going to be more on Debo, who's been the breakout outside guy, and then you've got Emmanuel Sanders in the slot. It makes sense for, uh, you know, look, you expect New Orleans to be able to score and have to have more fantasy going back and forth. I'm going He's to, 200 cheaper than your guy. He is 200 cheaper than my guy, but my guy is boom bust extraordinaire. <laughs> Zach Pascal at $6,100. If I'm playing in a tournament like this tournament with us at Fandle.com slash ballers and you're wanting to be the you know in the top five or win the week, taking a cheap shot on someone like Zach Pascal against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you're talking double-digit targets last week, a touchdown, plenty of yards. You can get that from him in you a super You would take a cheap shot, plus. Jason. You would. You would. Absolutely. Cheap shots to win. All right, Mike, your ballers on a budget pick. With Greg Olson dealing with the concussion, I am projecting Greg Olson to not play, so I will take the free square at the tight end position. Ian Thomas, who, in relief of Greg Olson, 
he barely played the game, but he came in immediately for four targets. Greg Olson has been utilized uh, in this offense, and I think Ian Thomas is the primary benefactor at the position. If Greg Olson doesn't play, he's only four thousand. Like he is, he is the type of guy you need to play to unlock the the high priced options. So I'll take Ian Thomas. I'll take my lumps. I'm, I'm not saying he's going to burn the house down with fancy points, but I'm saying he will he will repl- uh, repay you on that $4,000 value. All right, don't miss your chance to win an all-expenses-paid trip to Arizona. Come hang out with us, the Fantasy Footballers Leaderboard Series at FanDuel.com slash Ballers. We want to thank our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction, a Michael Gallup signed jersey <laughs> yesterday. Well done, bro. $65.52. <laughs> I think somebody picked this up in garbage time in those auctions. Oh, pristineauction.com. Are, we, are they going to have a uh, Gallup sign the body bag that he put Jason in? No, oh, he tried to put him in there. <laughs> I don't know if he was right or wrong, but uh, use the code ballers at pristineauction.com. That'll do it for today's show. A reminder, go to footclangiveaway.com, giving away that Nick Chubb jersey, free entry. You can vote for us, help support the show. Good, Good luck, luck this weekend. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.